when you just kind of, I don't know, roll the dice, you can surprise yourself and do exciting things. So. This episode is being supported by Aux, the desktop app that helps you collaborate on music projects with anyone anywhere in the world, now available on Mac and PC. Click on the link in the description to get 50 gigs of storage for $1. I'm going to have to give a shout out to the software that I use, which doesn't get enough (laughs) praise, I don't think. It does. It has had a huge effect on how I make music because it's so good for sampling stuff. You can you press a button and it will record um, like what I'm listening to on the computer. So I'm on YouTube and I just quickly like record it and then immediately, like if you see on the screen there, you cut it up into loads of different tiny, tiny sections and each one you can apply its own effect, you can pitch shift it, you can do whatever you want. It's just in terms of like manipulating sound, I'm sure everyone's as quick as as this on their own stuff, but I just, I think this is the perfect program for for sampling other music and and twisting it and turning it. Samplitude. And it's called Samplitude. It's in the name. It's funny that no one uses this program. If you go on their website, it's actually got a picture of me being like, (laughs) I love Samplitude. It's me and like loads of German techno producers and stuff. It's Yeah, it's amazing. This this is quite a good indication of how most of our songs start, this one actually. So it started with me downloading a sample pack from a sample pack website. Right. And I'm totally comfortable admitting that a lot of songs start like that. Um, you love a sample, though. I, I love mean, a that, sample. That, that's you know, we discovered that on the Mr. Duke's episode. Yes, you know, how how you, know, you kind of crate digging on the internet. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I'm a very introverted songwriter, and I think sampling it it allows you to almost like collaborate without having to interact with other human beings. <laughs> so you can you can have all these other musicians in the room with you, so to speak, and be bouncing off ideas and mixing things up. But you're still you still get to just be by yourself. But um, this was the sample. It covers kind of R&B and hip hop and, and pop music from the 90s, that kind of era. And and it does sound a bit like um, whatever that, I don't know what the title is, but Hi, My Name Is by Eminem. Right, yeah. Um, just goes like this. I think it is My Name Is. My Name yeah. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ticka Ticka Slim Shady. <laughs> um, so that was the original sample. That's the sample. That's interesting. And you know, there would have been about ten or twelve different like compositions on that, and that just just uh yeah, got my attention and and from that point it's happened everything's happening super fast. And you if you see the screen you'll you'll know that it's all just so disorganized, like nothing here makes sense, and it's because I don't have time to to label or color things or just it's all just like rah. Let's see what happens. And then at the end, you you sort of look back and think whether it's worth keeping. But in the moment, you're not really really aware of what you're doing. So rather than go to the drum kit and like mic it up and spend loads of time on the sound, the the, the beat is, again, just a beat from a sample pack. Like it's just one one sound. And that made it onto the record. We didn't, we like, we love that You sound often so try and recreate them and you spend half a day on it and you go back to the original sample. And you're, you're like, this is amazing. There's something about it and in its in its spontaneity that you kind of can't recreate. Totally. Yeah. So I mean that's that's the verse done. It's like so simple. It's <laughs> that's like a lot really of song, yeah. sound. Really not like selling myself here. It's like you could just just steal all this stuff. But there's definitely something to be said about doing it alone at first and sending it so that the guys can hear it in a totally objective way and can be sort of just like doing the washing up while listening to it rather than being in the room, holding a guitar, mm. being involved, and getting that rush of adrenaline and that excitement that can sometimes cloud your 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 vision or or make you less critical of what you're doing. So I think you know you just put your headphones in, and I send you an email saying, "Check this out." Mm. There's nothing romantic about it. You can just be like, "No, it's not. This isn't that great." Sorry. Yeah. But when a band spends all night playing a song ten times, they start to believe that it is a wonderful thing. Mm. I mean, I definitely am quite self conscious around other mm. people, so I won't just like try stuff, even though it might not work. And that's the best way to make music is just to try a hundred things and see. Yeah, you're completely like, free if you're doing that. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm sure there's loads of stuff that we never hear that you try and kind of put to the side. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of terrible stuff. Yeah, I think there was a choice of like we needed that kind of middle eight section, which typically can sort of go down sometimes and be this like you know intimate like drop down. And I think we said, oh, let's 
try and do the opposite of that. And so the song just kind of goes to a completely different dimension and, and goes up a level and changes uh, scene completely. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Orcs. Our podcast looks in depth at the creative process, but one part of the process that we don't talk about is how painful it can be to manage these creative projects, especially when collaborating with other producers, musicians or vocalists remotely online. Currently, it involves numerous apps, websites and tools for file storage, sending large projects or providing detailed feedback. The team at Orcs are here to change that. The Orcs app keeps your door projects synced up in the background, so you don't have to wait for your collaborators to upload their latest version. And what's unique is that you can leave detailed, time-stamped comments on the track and project stems, making feedback so much more precise and easy to manage. You can also relax knowing your projects are backed up too. The app is free for up to 10 gigs of project files, but there's a special offer for Take Notes listeners. 50 gigs of file storage for just $1 per month by using the code Take Notes, all one word, when you subscribe to the starter plan. Visit orcs.app forward slash take notes to get the full details. And now, on with the show. I'll just play it. I'm push it and I'll just Don't start isolating all the different of bongos sounds we got here. We've got <laughs> like 10 tracks of bongos here. But again, this is me demoing the song, so I'm not playing a single bongo. It's all... That's the break number one. This is break number two. Oh, that's not playing. Why is that not working? Oh, no. I've got, got that. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is... That's just bongos. Just bongos. It's all samples. That's great. And they all just come together to make. And Radical are they all sound. from the same sample pack? Or are they. Are they are these no, are other this sounds. Is just collect, yeah, this is collected over a long yeah, time. This is in your library of, exactly. of samples that you've. But I mean, not as many as most people probably. I do recycle things a lot. I think it's nice to have like your your one sound that you use. Like I think early Bombay demos would all have the same tambourine. Yeah. Yeah. Through every song. And it, they probably made it onto our records and the same crash symbol on all of your songs. So it's like, why not? You don't need to have a thousand. So. Yeah. Becomes an identifier, doesn't it? Exactly. And even that drum sample, I mean, even that drum fill, that is a separate thing from a separate, I love that fill, separate sample pack. <laughs> and now Seren has to play that every night. So yeah, right. it's like someone else is dictating what we need to do out there. It's kind of like just letting it up to the, like letting it up to the gods, right? It's, yeah. But it's interesting because Seren has to go and learn all those parts. Yeah. And yeah. Like, I don't, I can't, do, I'm like, I don't know how, yeah. how to do it. Yeah. So. I do think it's another wonderful thing about sampling is, a, a, a brilliant way of of, of um, incorporating chance into what you're doing, because a, a lot of the problem with making music is over intellectualizing things and overthinking, and when you just kind of, I don't know, roll the dice, you can surprise yourself and do exciting things. So even just like going down over loads of samples until like something surprising happens, and then using that rather than sitting and trying to work out through logic what would have been the right thing to do, I think that's a nice way to do it. Yeah. This song went on quite the journey, so it'd be fun to talk about. Yeah, yeah was... excellent. Where does it start? Jim? Can you guess where this song starts? <laughs> Could it be <laughs> with a guess? sample, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is me cutting up the sample, and it's a um, band called the Vikings of Guadeloupe. So was this a, a record that you purchased in a flea market? I wish. This is me browsing YouTube right late at night. Because like, I mean, you're a well-traveled man. No. Yeah. I um, I got addicted to going and buying too many re like too many records. And the thing is, when you're in a record shop, there's it sounds much, it sounds better. Mm. Like they the listening stations, they crank it up. It's all like you're you're like excited to be there. You're like, this is the best record I've ever heard. And you take it back, and it doesn't sound as good. And you just pile up all these ones that you don't want. So I've uh. I've switched to digital only for the time being. <laughs> Fair enough. I can understand that. I mean, it, it, that is very true. Things you hear in record shops sound amazing sometimes, mm. just as things you hear on the radio sound amazing sometimes, and then you get them home and they're not quite the same. And I mean, especially as a, as a crate digger, like a sample, mm. someone's finding samples, you do just end up f like physically with too much, you know, you're, you're just trying to find like one sound and you have to buy a whole record for it. So I don't know, maybe that's going to yeah. get me in trouble, but. I'm at peace with uh, with just using YouTube now. That's fair enough. So you were 
surfing YouTube and came across Le Viking de Guadeloupe. What, yeah. Were you in bed when you, I mean, did, what, what's your favoured position to go <laughs> searching? Yeah, this could have been, this could have been a late night sort of down the rabbit hole experience, which you, you usually find a lot of great music and you have to be very, um, you have to remind yourself to save it because in the morning you guess, you know, you're going to wake up and be like, oh my God, what the hell did I find last night? So did, you, I, did I dream that? You've got a lot of playlists. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so when you're doing that, what's the technique? Is it just straight in to the sound? Did their name catch your attention? No. I think it's a, it's a combination of quite a good algorithm now and just communities on, on YouTube. There's, there's amazing channels which just kind of curate music for you. Um, again, for me, it's like the simplest and laziest path to something is the route I'm going to take. So these guys are like, just finding amazing music and and, uh, and uh, putting it in playlists. And I must have found it through there. 